Hello and welcome! It's session number 44 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hi guys! Hello! 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 Click, click, click. I hope you've all been well. Ah, click. Yeah! Mm -hmm. mm, okay, because I will not accept no for an answer. <laughs> Dennis, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your mouth shut, this Dennis. Is toxic <laughs> Keep your positivity. To yourself. <laughs> 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 is everyone doing well? If so, good. If not, don't care. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no sub stories at this table. <laughs> you're not here to harsh the mellow of everyone else. So if you're not doing good, shut up. I've, I've never done better. <laughs> don't be a party pooper. Okay. Don't lie. So you better, <laughs> Dennis, you better give us the happiest summary that we've ever had at this table. Oh, okay. Do you Tour? No other option. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we put on some party music. This, this session is only made to set the scene for Matt next week. Okay, yes, so Perfect. the expectations are lowered for him to bring out a banger. Oh, God. <clears throat> After a brief discussion on whether or not to help Freda, Freda, the group decides to take on the Heart Monster dungeon. Pontifex distracts the ones at the surface so our heroes can enter without any disturbance. Inside, they see a multi-layered tomb with alcoves that have stone coffins inside them. The hearts are wandering around and attacking each other. Before starting the battle, Pip casts a major image distraction to lure most of them in one corner before Pontifex releases a thunderball on the grouped up hearts. This is a signal to go and our heroes fight bravely. Their fears and current thoughts get amplified by the hearts and every time one of them gets attacked by a heart, a connection is made and they get a glimpse into their current slash past question mark mind state. Tekka faces one that is stuck in a cell trying desperately to get out. Brooke sees the pain of a lost loved one and Squeak experiences a chasing scene of a person followed by a moss, like the one we've seen before, who is constantly jumping between the dream world and reality until they escape. Sometime during the fight, an orc woman comes out of one of the coffins. She is revealed to be named Devamia and is the person our heroes went into this dungeon for. Once the fighting is over, Devamia and Telix go for a little walk, where Telix learns that the dream that the dream moss we've seen before are named Aitara Duff. He also learns more about Lidaria being divided between all creatures. And while we knew that the dragons got the sky, the demons the sea, and the rest of the creatures the land, some creatures received the dream world. In the meantime, Pip does his granny's bidding. And after shopping down the heart, that Brook fought, into little pieces, he sends another batch of ingredients to her. <laughs> Our heroes learned a lot in the dungeon, but as usual, with every new piece of knowledge, a lot of new questions pop, as, pop up as well. What exactly is this place for? A ritual tomb? Who exactly inhabits the dream world? And why is this dealing dread bigger than the Lord of Skies? Hopefully, we will get answers in this session of the Underlander's Guide to Lidaria. Aww. Title ah. drop! Why, thank you! Thank you for advertising my campaign to you're welcome, anyone you're who might not know about it. <laughs> uh, it's for the viewers! The only people who will hear about it are the people who are currently watching it, but you know. <laughs> I will call. It's for the viewers. Have some <laughs> adspiration. Let's go! <laughs> Here you go. Sponsor inspiration. <laughs> Hey, loop, loop. Um, yeah, that should be everything. I appreciate it. it didn't go into detail about the amount of uh, blood, uh, heart chopping that Pip committed. We were on a time budget. Yeah. There's only Still that just seconds I have covered for in blood. Just it's only covered. a three minute ad, that's all you paid for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it costs you another inspiration for another three minutes. 
I'll give you three minutes of hard oh, God damn it. chopping. You know what? Forget this. Eat rock. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, perfect. Oh, actually, I think that breaks the scripting. Uh-uh. Maybe not. You know what? Let's keep the map. <laughs> you don't need to see the... What do you do? Hold on. Maybe it will work this we? time. What is happening? Ah, build. Maybe it will work the second time around. Yep. Oh, it yes. is. Damn, okay. Don't bring your minis in, though. Or put them here if you'd like, but I'm not going to bother fixing the collision of the bones. <laughs> anyway, we're professionals here. Let me, let, me, let me set up the music and I'll welcome you back to the session. You have just climbed out from the uh, chamber beneath the remains of Stilling Dread. Uh, you have found that the remaining heart beings <laughs> have <laughs> taken care of each other. <laughs> it does, though. Collision on the bones. Um, and you have made it out um, along uh, the newly met Freida and the Vamya. <laughs> Weeping hearts. Um, you find Murder Claw uh, cautiously. Um, waiting for the rest of you a, a great distance away from the actual staircase um and the wyvern as soon as he <laughs> as soon as he spots <laughs> <laughs> guys i'm trying deep. to set a mood <laughs> 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 as soon as murder claw spots the vavia and and freda um he uh he seems to, to to regain some some energy and uh, to suddenly be in a much better mood. Uh, and you watch as the uh, quite large uh, wyvern uh, pretty much leaps into the orc's arms and just flattens her to the ground. Um, so <laughs> what would you like to do? What is what is the plan? All right, Alex, what do we do? Yeah, you we're here. You wanted us to get here. What do you want to do next? <laughs> uh, Talix has questions for Devamia and Freida. Um, and you know what? Considering uh, the time of day, if the party agrees, perhaps they could be invited into your portable tower? Yeah, that sounds sure. fine. Um, Just, you I'm, know, maybe a little bit away from all of this. I'm voting for the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> are there so still... I can use a good steaming. Are there still weeping hearts out here as well? Like we saw last time? Um, the two that you saw last time are dead. Oh. Well. Um, when, you, when you emerged from the circus, you found them sort of like wrapped ar around one another ah, and they seem to have killed each other right you know there's something poetic about it what's that professor I don't know they're just uh, uh, brutally murdering each other I'm sure there's like a good short story about it um I don't know it seems kind of sad I mean, most of the ones we fought down there didn't seem too happy. So, yeah. I think I might actually feel kind of bad about all of this. You know? Like, I don't know if we could have spoke to them instead of uh, thunderballing them all, but... Wait, what about the cool one? The one that is uh, friendly. Is it still down there? Or is it just following us? Um, that one left before you guys did. Uh, and by the time you reached the surface and you climbed up from the staircase, uh, it's not around. Uh, so you can tr are, are you interested in trying to, to locate it? Or are you letting it go? Uh, I don't think Pontifex cares that much. 
It's just more of a, like, is it staying down there in the tomb? Is it just following us around? Right, That's is, weird. Or is it right, it left ahead of you. Now? It's, it is someone else's problem. <laughs> Though I do wonder why they were congregated around this whole thing. And if they were killing each other, then they couldn't have been here for very long, right? That's true. I didn't think about that. Like, this is a recent thing. And they came out of the coffins? Uh, the Vadia seems so. nods. I saw them pulling one another out of the coffins. Freeing each other. You know, before backstabbing. You've never seen anything like this before? Oh no, never. This is a brand new discovery. So, do you like... Do you... Oh, mm, are you telling these stories to anyone? We do plan on publishing our discoveries, eventually. Especially if we can do it ahead of Jamuel Fleetfoot. Can you imagine? Well... That should be pretty easy. Seeing as how he's... Not finished writing his book yet? Missing. Mm -hmm. Missing. What do you mean uh, missing? Sort of. I mean, like, uh, the... The general understanding of what it means to be missing. At Vami and Freda exchange a, a glance, neither of them seem the two to notice. Right, you're all pretty far out here. Uh, Jamiel has been gone for a bit. He has been gone for so long that even uh, the phantoms were to go look for him we had no idea uh, we haven't been back in in the peninsula for uh, almost a year now did you all know him Daniel the picks up uh, we've never met him in person well save one time when he got his autograph <laughs> but uh, never really spoken to him Well, how was he? Uh, in a hurry. It looked like he didn't really want to be to be there. Yep, that was him. I get it, though. I mean, there's an entire continent to be explored. Where Where else have you been out here? <laughs> Well, this is our first real expedition that uh, uh, Freda and I have done on our own. Uh, we... Uh, we've been looking for the remains of Stealing Dread for... Uh, for a long time now. And... We found... Almost... What we wanted to find. Not all of it, though. You know, if we wanted to exchange notes, we could just... Uh, we could uh, set up uh, a camp over here. Um, and Talix interrupts her and says that there is no need. And uh, a few moments later, there is an entire tower uh, that emerges from, from the ground in your, in your uh, chosen location. And I've heard that you guys want a spa? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Unless the rest of the group doesn't want to. You really think anyone will say no to the spa? I don't know. Pekka? Do you want a spa? <laughs> He's no, allergic to being clean. <laughs> Pekka hates spas. <laughs> <laughs> All my homies hate spas. <laughs> Uh, Tekka the... doesn't want the spa, I don't want the spa. <laughs> the bedroom was where we last saw the moth, right? Yeah. I yeah. think Pip would want 
the bedroom to be there. If if that is okay. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, we don't have to get this spot. How many rooms do we get? Three? Three. At this level, we get three. Uh, and if there's not another one, Bonifex would want the study. Uh, when sure it has all the books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... Freda and Dvami are uh, impressed, of course. Just wait. Uh, Murder Claw has to wait outside. But he will... L like a dog who's not allowed to get inside the house, he'll just have his head in the doorway. And like every time you look away and then back towards him, he has inched a little bit closer, <laughs> a little bit closer, until he's like halfway inside the room. Um, and that's in, in the comfort of the uh, dry and uh, dust-free tower. Uh, you share some, some notes with one another. Uh, mm -hmm. And the thing that uh, the Vami and Freda are really excited about uh, um, is it, not... Well, it's, it's still in dread, but not just that, uh, as the Vami elaborates. So, we found... The majority of the bones are still in dread, but the skull is missing. And that's the final thing that we're trying to locate, and we think we're pretty close. I mean, have you seen the size of that thing? Surely it can't have been taken too far. I, I think I know a decent uh, bit of higher magics and... I mean, it is no small feat to be able to do it, but it is definitely possible. Uh, with the types of magic that could have been used in that chamber beneath all of it, it wouldn't surprise me if someone capable was around. Uh, yeah, that is, that is a good point. If magic was used to take it away, then oh, it could be just about anywhere. I guess we'll be looking for the dragon people instead. The who? The... The dragon people. You don't know about the dragon people? Let me tell you about the dragon people. Okay, so... Ladaria has... Their own... Dragonborn. I mean, probably. Ooh. But we're pretty sure. Continue. Um... I mean, we'll produce some, some notes and go through them, and Freda does the same. Um, Freda actually sits down in one of the available chairs, and he, he starts spreading out uh, their, their papers uh, on the table. Um, as Dvami explains. Right, so, there is a legend in regards to stilling dread. Back when the Lidarians were fighting between one another, dragons decided to call upon the power of stilling dread so that uh, uh, this section of the world will be entirely turned to stone through the power of her petrifying breath but not all dragons uh, agreed with this they thought that uh, uh, resorting to stilling stilling dread's breath uh, would be far too cruel and so two of them descended on the continent to give uh, the to give its people a warning those two dragons were Kirio and Mirio now uh, they didn't have the time to evacuate all the people from this forest so instead they made a deal with them and they offered to give them the power of a dragon and thus, through the offer of Kirio and Mirio, some humanoids were turned into more uh, dragon-like people. And when Stilling Dread did descend from the sky and petrified the entire forest, which we are now in, those people survived. 
and they went on to uh, keep on living after the war ended. And we think that they're hiding somewhere around here. Does any of this have ties to the Lord of the Sky? Not particularly. The Lord of the Sky is the Lord of all dragons, and it was his order uh, that brought ruin upon Dustfall. He was the one who requested that stilling, the Stilling Dread uh, be involved in the war. That's the extent of his involvement, I suppose. Hmm. These people, why would they be hiding? Right, it is strange. Hmm. I'm not sure. From what I understand, uh, when someone is granted a vestige of Dragonhood, we could call it. Uh, most of the caution tends to go away. Uh, they are filled with boundless confidence. So to escape is curious. Perhaps it is not a matter of hiding. Uh, perhaps our village is simply in a very difficult to reach place. Hmm. Could it be in the sky? Would they... Would they be able to go there? Mm, I'm doubtful. Humanoids are not allowed. Although, right, to be fair, they are part of dragon. Maybe. I hope not. We, we're not really allowed to bring Murder Claw too far up into the sky. Unless we want to die. <laughs> or end up in the cage. In a cage. <laughs> Silly suggestion. It is. Very stupid. Anyways, uh, in, in this room, the study, these are um, notes of uh, Talix's uh, father. He was also a trailblazer, you could call him. Uh, you seem to be kindred souls. I see no problem with them reading them, right, Alex? <laughs> uh, Alex will share some information. Uh, the three of them Maybe and all can book. bond over this. Yes, all of them will bond over this. Uh, <laughs> Alex, you continue to be the ladies' man of the campaign. <laughs> Why can we not find a new female NPCs without them just swooning immediately? Uh, did the it's rest of the... you want to do anything? Uh, um, Squeak will be involved in the research, mainly because Devamia is very interested in him. I'm going to the spa. Squeak hmm. is interested in anyone interested in Squeak. <laughs> <laughs> the one who actually called him a demon? No, a, a devil. A, de no, a devil. Yeah, they got it right. <laughs> I'm like, man. <laughs> um, Pip, Pip does have one curiosity that he would want to, to try and ask more questions about. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's about the Atara Duve. Okay. Um, Pip would just like wander over <laughs> just sort of gently like as they're looking over other notes be like um hey what I wanted to know more about the Atara Doof the 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 um how do they walk through dreams and what are these moths we saw one in here before Um, Freda puts down the notes that she was looking at, and instead she uh, retrieves some of her own, um, slowly and, and gently going through the pages. Uh, um, she, uh, she picks a particular spot and shows uh, to, to Pip uh, a, a sketch of a colorful moth. Uh, and she says, 
Well, I can't say I understand uh, how they move between reality and dreams. Though, uh, clearly, the, the Lidarian concept of dreams is different from our own. They have a, a physical space that they go to. A world that is sort of like this one, but different but perhaps for them it's as simple as what we would call a te teleportation magic D did that answer answer your question sort of What about the Maws? Do they live in that world? Hmm, perhaps. I've never seen the Moths, and I've never encountered Anitara Duvi in, in person. So I imagine they spend more time in dreams than they do here. Or at the very least, they can use them to hide very easily and effectively from, from us. I thought that maybe this place was sort of usually in the dream space, but maybe could be brought here with, with whatever magic Talix uses to get it here. You mean to Tower? Yeah. Yeah, when it's not here, it has to be somewhere, right? I... I, I wouldn't know. I'm not sure if there is any way to, to verify that. Besides consulting wh whoever built it. If I'm not mistaken, though, this is... This is learn an architecture. Hmm. You know, all Itara are forced to live on the peninsula and nowhere else in Lidaria. And when they were first b banished to it, some of them befriended certain animals and they ended up forming different clans around these, these creatures. And that's how we ended up with their current separation. There's the ones that bond with birds and the ones that feel more comfortable uh, around fishes. And, and the Unan. Yes, uh, the ones who live among and alongside the, the Unan. And the ones who befriended these moths. Perhaps that is how they ended up learning to move freely to, to and from dreams. Perhaps the moths taught them. Oh, so you think, or do you know that the moths have some kind of power? All Etara have evolved to coexist with their respective animals. You've seen how they share physical attributes with them. The Atarava grow feathers and, and so on. So perhaps... Perhaps that is... It's, it's just a, a hypothesis, but... The Atara Doof's ability to travel uh, between the waking and the dream world might come from them. Hmm. The moths.
that's an interesting theory. Thank you. Talix is like frantically jotting down notes of this <laughs> giant revelation about all of the Ayatara people. I'm, I'm gonna go look for it. For the moth? Yeah. It was in the bedroom last time. I'll stay here. Uh, I'm sure they need my help <laughs> researching. It's going to be getting interviewed. <laughs> I'll stay here with the big orc lady that knew who I was. <laughs> Maybe she knows my dad. <laughs> she knows the difference between devils and demons. I mean, everybody knows She's my the girl dad. Of my life. I mean, if she knows the difference, she must know all the devils. <laughs> I've been I'm, gonna have uh... <laughs> I love squeaks. <laughs> Can so I have good. an investigation check from Pip? Yeah. Aww. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, Pip is absolutely positive that there is no evidence that any moth has been anywhere in this room. Um, ever. for mothballs. Not ever. It was just, since the last <laughs> time it had been spotted. Hello? Mothballs. Up the chimney. All the Hello? are intact. <laughs> <clears throat> well, if they're not sleeping in the bed and they're not in the chimney, I guess they're definitely not here. <laughs> Maybe in his <laughs> chest? Nope. If I were a moth, where would I hide? <laughs> I actually have one more question for the two. Mm -hmm. You said earlier that this was your first mission by yourself. Does it mean you were traveling with a group before? Or is this first mission one year long? Uh, Devamia answers. <clears throat> uh, we are members of the Silver Claw Guild. And up until last year, we've always traveled in, in groups, which meant we were safer, but we didn't go anywhere near as far, and we didn't have the freedom to research what we wanted. But this time, well, this time is different. This time we've been funded. We can go on our own, go wherever we want, <laughs> and we just have to bring back results. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what a little bit of money can do? Yeah. I forget, didn't Telex join the Silver Claws? Or did they or did you only talk with them? That is me asking. Um I believe Telex signed up. I yeah, vaguely I so. remember forms being <laughs> exchanged. Ooh, it's been a while. Silver Claws, that's interesting. Well, what do you like more? By yourself? Um, Fred ends up like taking one of Devamia's hands and uh, squeezing it uh, gently, and the two of them exchange a look, and Devamia nods and says, "Yeah, yeah, we like being on our own. N n <laughs> not that we're not enjoying your company, but you know, for long trips, the, the two of us." I mean, we enjoy the privacy. Understandable. <laughs> Say, would you want to come with us in our search for the Ladarian Dragonborn? Uh, we, we think we're very close. Is, is, am only I there? Or is anyone else there as well? Mm, Tekka's probably, yeah, Tekka's here. I think after Pip left to, to look for the moth, that's when Pontifex like, took his cue to, to go to the spa. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in there uh, 
because he uh, he took off his armor to go into the thing, and I don't think he bothered to put it back on. He just like picked it up on the way, so he just mm -hmm. like got in here, shed the robes, and is just like in his <laughs> froggy goodness. Just basking in the steam. He's got it like <laughs> turned all the way up so that you can barely see your own hand in front of you. <laughs> well, it sounds intriguing, but this is probably something we have to discuss as a group. So, with all of us, we have a few <coughs> tasks of our own for different members of our group so well what are you guys looking for maybe we can help it's a list somewhere we are here seeking many things answers Devamia waits for you to, to elaborate. <laughs> We're seeking answers. Refuses to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you one question. Have you had untoward dreams? Unfamiliar to you? Uh, the two of them pause to think about it, and one after the other, they both shake their heads. Then you cannot answer my question. I I'm sorry. I, I do not dream at all. Two of the two sets? Freda? Freda. Yeah. The elf. What will you require from us if we join your journey? I've seen you fight, and there are plenty of dangers out here. We're really just looking for uh, some protection. I mean, the last time... Well, not the last time, but earlier... Didn't... The one we tried to rescue say they could have done it by themselves. Well, that was different. I was hidden. And... Which was fine. And those hard things were killing one another anyway. So I could have just waited it out, but... When, when they ambushed us, Freda and I did end up being separated. And it was a bit of a mess. Have you gotten attacked here often? Do you need protection? <sighs> Lots of creatures. Animals, mainly. Um, they, they often attack on sight. And <laughs> to some of them, I, I can speak with them and tell them to back down, really please. Uh, not all of them listen, though. Well, I think you misunderstand maybe a little bit. Yes, we did pretty well in that fight, but I think the only trained fighter in this group is me. And the others, at least as if, if it were what's up to me, would avoid any fight possible. Right? You convinced Talix to help you rescue or help you help let us help you guys get into the dungeon. So the rest of the group decides. Sure. Uh, 
a um, where <laughs> uh, wh where would that leave us? So then, uh, me, the DM, asking like, um, like, is the decision up to Talix? Uh, probably with. I mean, if we talk with Pip and Pontifex, we could probably come to a conclusion on what we want to do. It sounds like Brooks wanting to like put a pin in this for the night and talk about it in the morning with the whole okay. group. Uh, then we can move on to other things if that's the end of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, Pip. Oh, Pip. Are you sleeping? Um... There's nothing left to do. <laughs> <laughs> They're not in the bed, but I'm already here, so... <laughs> Good night, everyone. Ah, <laughs> uh, you, you briefly check on, on Orm uh, before, before falling asleep. Uh, and Orm has one, one comment... I'll put it up here in this corner. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? You know, maybe we should consult with him more often. <laughs> Just in general. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe every time we have a question, we'll be like, hey, check the book. Mm hmm. Refuses to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> he learned well. I remember a big stone skull. Just throwing that out there. Sleepwalking to an insane knock. degree. Oh. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Yeah. Knock, knock. Oh, uh. he's at the. <laughs> who, who's there? Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. Matter of fact, will like cover himself ever so slightly. No, he won't. He has no modesty. Oh no. <laughs> no! Pip opens the door. <laughs> scarred forever. <laughs> I am Beats quite in. scarred. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Pip uh, points at the book, then waves you over, and then just runs off again. Okay, does the child not know to leave a book in the steamy room? <laughs> Motherfucker's <laughs> gonna lumber over. And so, my dad was telling me. Hey, hey, what? Oh, hold on. Pontifex, don't you hate when you're like taking a nice bath after a day of work and like your phone rings and somebody needs you? Yeah, and they just bring me a mystical walkie talkie. A <laughs> mystical walkie talkie. Hey. I want to take a seat and start reading with Orm. So. I think Pip would like slide over to uh, between Tekka and Brooke and just say, Hey, should we? Is it okay if we show them the book or look? Did you bring the book with you? Yeah. Oh, I thought you left it. I'm showing it to you. <laughs> huh. Well, that would definitely help some. Sure, why not? What do we... What do we tell them this is? Sentient book. Okay. Here, Tekka, you do it. 
I do not trust them. I will do it if you so say. And Tekka moves forward. You too. We have information to give you. Oh, y you do? What is it? This book is not ours, but it is magical and provides information that we have had no other way of knowing. It is not yours to keep. It is yours to read only now. Do you understand? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, of course, we, we will not take it from you. Then fine. And Tekka will hold up, uh, yeah, the page where this last pas passage was written. Uh, additional words show up uh, after that. Don't show the women. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, not that. Yeah, I think Pontifex is just sitting cross-legged on this stool, full nude in the steam, reading the book. This is his happy place. What what do you mean? Where was it not in that place before? Tell me everything you know. Oh, Professor. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> uh yeah, or Orm just elaborates on the fact that he, he thinks he can uh, Ah. Oh, I thought you left the book with Pontifex. No. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, the book oh, is okay, okay. I thought you said that, that you left the book in uh, the room and then ran he, off. He pointed at it and then waved at you to come. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then, yeah, Pontifex <laughs> is walking in, like, clad in a towel. And that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> just He's just around out. his waist. Well, and actually, I don't think you guys have ever seen Pontifex like with actually the whole robes off. You've just seen the hood, uh, those crazy chemical burns that are all over his head, like continue down over his shoulders and like down his back and like to his upper chest. Like his whole upper body is pretty messed up. Oh. And also, his skin is like unsettling, and with like how big his pores are, we'll call it. <laughs> on account of that's what he breathes through so it's like kind of freaky to see someone like this it just looks like his skin is like really pockmarked it's that and then it's all pretty saggy yeah that's uh <laughs> the, I'm afraid I tried to loose. <laughs> try to focus on the self writing uh, page of the book in, in front of them <laughs> yeah Um, and, and they are pretty like, visibly uh, excited about it um, see that Orm... <laughs> Don't be too excited. <laughs> you see that Orm uh, elaborates and says that uh, he might be able to, to lead you to, to the skull in question. Um, and the orc and the elf seem pretty hyped about it. I, I, I have... A lot of questions about this book. Can I ask? I will not answer you. If the <laughs> others choose to, then... Also refuses to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> this is the theme of the episode. <laughs> mm, refusal to elaborate. I mean, you can always ask questions. I just... Be proof. Be prepared that we might not share all answers. You get one answer per day. <laughs> Take You're it. You're not leave. getting one answer per day. It always depends on the question. <laughs> the book immediately says I didn't you say, say it would be a true answer. answer. Oh, that's true. Okay, sorry. You get one answer a day. 
<laughs> Time to find out how big of Jamil fanboys these people are. Fangirls they are, if they recognize the name. <clears throat> they do not. Um, uh, after the, the many refusals to elaborate, it kind of brings their attention back to the, to the book instead of seems a lot more open about answering their questions. <laughs> uh, and, um, the Vami the actually begins to, to, to ask all sorts of things like, uh, where, do, where does it come from? Who does it belong to? Uh, how does it know this? How does it know that? And, and Freda actually puts a hand on her, on her arm and says, Maybe, maybe we should not be asking all these things. Uh, we have been given a lot of trust today. Um, I think our cu curiosity can wait. Mm. Vamia deflates a little bit, but ah, listens to her and will simply uh, sort of like a gesture at the book and say, well, uh, in that case, my request changes a little bit. And instead of us leading you, it could be you leading us. Orm, how long does it take us to get to that skull? Do you have any ideas? Traveling through the dust. Oh, well, that is not very far. I'll look at the others. Are we all okay with that? You yes. know, Freda is an excellent cook. <laughs> if this leads us in the directions of the dragons, I'm always in. I really like to see the big stone skull. I accept three days of travel. All right. This could get me one step closer to getting back my prison. And it might tell us more about where Orm and them went. What they were doing. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, Freda is a good cook. What do you have to offer? I can speak with animals. Well, okay. That makes three of us. Four. Oh. Four. Okay, less impressive. Wait, I didn't call myself. Did you call me, Pip? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah four. <laughs> uh, I'm a good climber. I can swing an axe. I can put up a tent with my eyes closed. All right, you guys have a tower. I'm not asking to see if you can come with us. Just, I'm pretty sure that decision is made. That I point? have a great smile. Waits. <laughs> uh, <laughs> refuses to elaborate. The <laughs> uh, grins. Uh, her orcish tusks almost glisten in the candlelight, and it's it's fine. It's it's a grin. Freda seems to to really like it, but <laughs> it's like a bullfrog. Beautiful. <laughs> I do want you to do something if we're gonna do this. Refuses to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I want for you to write a section in your book about my dad. Will you provide all the details? Yeah. Then absolutely. Uh, 
would very much like to read it whenever you are done. Perhaps I can proofread it for editing and such. We'll send you a copy. Free of charge. In the mail? In the mail. Perfect. Could even hire a wyvern to do that. Here, take my world point card, the information. <laughs> Anytime you wish to send me mail, please do. If the fancy strikes you, just don't think about it. Just do it. <laughs> ah, they, they exchange their own world point information with, with yours. I don't believe I ever properly introduced myself. I am a former professor at Pontifex Vastalus Alenach. I am a, a theologian of sorts, uh, and also aspiring journeyman scribe. I think I've done a bit of research into, uh, well, into Plurnen. <laughs> the I you don't mind have heard of me? I'm somewhat of a big deal. Uh, 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 mm, no. Sorry, theology is not our thing. But, but I'm sure that... You know what? I would like to listen to a lesson. Ooh. Ooh, well, everyone. good night. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 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 Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, and thus, <laughs> Pontifex and Vami and Freda <laughs> spend the next three hours. <laughs> Great. No takes back. Oh, Allow me lesson. to regale you with <laughs> all of the known tales of the wyvern. <laughs> and he's um, just gonna go on and on and on and on and on and on and like really delving into some like deep conspiracy theory type <laughs> stuff about, you know, all these things point to this and like as a theologian I'm justified in making these assumptions and like he really goes down some crazy tangent. All of it thoroughly researched. I uh, think when... Yeah. Uh, Freda or Devamia say they want to listen to a lesson. Brooke chuckles and then also uses this as his call to go to the spa or to mm -hmm. the sauna. I imagine most of you disperse. Pontifex <laughs> 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 is giving this lesson in just a towel. <laughs> this, 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 this damp towel this has been like leaving like dripping watermarks all the way through the town to here <laughs> I, I and everyone else is, them of tales of the wyvern everyone else is leaving pontifex and the two women oh no yeah giving Allow a pat on the shoulder Lego collection. <laughs> giving a pat on the shoulder good luck with that one you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> knowing, knowing Talix, I think he would bring Pontifex some of his clothes. Uh, and then stick around for the lesson. <laughs> Thanks, uh -huh. you can just leave them in the corner. Anyways, as I was saying, <laughs> the wyvern. Tekka? Does Tekka stick around? No. <laughs> Before no. going upstairs, uh, yeah? Pip would just say an apology to Talix for getting some blood in the bed. Um, huh? And then would... He oh, He is still covered in blood. Yeah. And will oh, head no. over to the spa to clean up. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, okay. He'll vanish in the morning. <laughs> uh, Pontifex will also receive a small lesson of his own <clears throat> uh, in return for uh, he's very lengthy. Uh, talks about the the gods of, of Plurina. Uh, Dvami lecture. and Freda. Yes, sorry, lecture. Dvami and Freda <laughs> have a tiny bit of information about the gods of Lidaria. Uh, if he'd, if that's something he'd be interested in too. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, so he hears a tiny bit about uh, four entities. Uh, well, five. Um, but two of them, Kyriel and Muriel, are kind of seen as their own single uh, being. Uh, so there's Kyriel and Muriel, Miodopite, the Lady of the Land, and Nadarath. Um, Can you spell those out for me? Absolutely. Uh, Lady of the Land, you know, Miodopite has 
uh, come up before possibly, but that's how that's a spelling. Kirill and Viriel. Oop. And Nadara. Oh, oops. Nadara. Got it. Uh, yeah, what are like some? Yeah, I guess like some brief summaries. Kirill and Muriel are the the two dragons that are kind of seen as a single entity of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the other ones like? What are they? What are they? What are the summaries of the brief things you tell me about them? Um. So, about the Lady of the Land, uh, their understanding is that she is the goddess of life and dreams. She represents the chaotic whims of seasons and the weather. Uh, and the Darians praise her after not just good harvests, but also after bad harvests, regardless of the result. Um, she, the, the, they, they have a saying, the lady gives and the lady takes. Um, awesome. Myod Myodopite um, is also known as the first martyr. Uh, he's the god of selflessness and love, and he's associated with the sun. Okay. And the Nadarath. Nadarath, also known as the daughter of the sea, she's the goddess of strength and loss. And supposedly, she judges the souls of the dead. Uh, those who are found worthy, <clears throat> sorry, those who are found worthy, they find rest, and the unworthy are dragged beneath the world, and where they will be punished until they eventually will reincarnate. They also have a little bit of knowledge about Kirill and Muriel, besides uh, the one tale of how they saved some humanoids from a stealing dread. Um, Kirill and Muriel are the gods of blood, as in the bonds between people. Uh, Ledarians uh, will... Uh, the, the Ledarian word for a friend literally translates, uh, literally means uh, that they are of the same blood. I might have skipped a sentence in there, but yes, they're, they're the gods of blood as in the relationship between people, whether it's uh, uh, mm -hmm. between relatives or not. Okay, uh, and, and these are the dragons the, that basically created the Ladarian dragonborn. Ah, uh, yes. Supposedly. And supposedly the, the moons uh, that uh, they each live on uh, were actually the creation of stealing, of stealing dread. The moons that they live on was what created the Stilling Dread. Uh, they were the moons were created by Stilling Dread. Mm. Uh, Do all the Ladarian gods live on a moon? Like, is that part of this mythos? Uh, just Kirill and Muriel. You know, I don't mean this to be offensive, but uh, I didn't expect the Ladarian uh, pantheon to be so uh, compelling. <clears throat> These are um, good. The Devamia says everything about finding a new civilization that lives on their own continent is just leading to all these things we never really thought about i, I mean are they even actual gods uh, a lot of plurinans will say that bakanath is the only goddess and so are uh, the animals that serve her so what does ladaria mean for for us maybe they're not really gods maybe they're just Extremely powerful beings, or maybe the they sources are sources of divine power for which their followers can channel it. Uh, 
That is the academic definition. I see no difference. Then again, Ladarians do uh, perform magic differently from us, do they not? And then, like, the three of you just begin, like, another lengthy mm -hmm. discussion. Uh, Freda is the first person to kind of eventually fall asleep uh, on, on her chair. Um, everybody else is gone. Um, and, like, the following morning, uh, Pontifex and Devami are the last uh, people to wake up. I do think at some point in the discussion that Pontifex and Devami keep talking, Pontifex is getting like, like while he is talking, going to be walking over to the corner and picking up his, uh, his cloak that was brought by Talox, and he's going to like drape it over, mm -hmm. over Freda, who's passed out in a chair, and like yeah, just continue his speech without missing sleep. a beat. Just cover her up a little bit. And then, yeah, eventually, <laughs> eventually, whenever they're done, and we want to call the night, Longfang's going to leave the blow, and he's going to go to the spa area, and he's <laughs> literally just going to go, like, set it to full blast again, and, like, pass out, uh, like, sitting on the bench. Yeah, by, by then, the other stuff are long gone. <laughs> he comes in to see Pip and Brooke just Voltroning <laughs> in the shower. I don't shower. know what's happening over here. <laughs> How many times can we stack vertically? How tall can we become? We discovered that the only way into the bath was through the top. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, wait. What? Yeah, you can what? just right click. I couldn't do that before, though. <laughs> I promise I'm not crazy. I think if you just hold right click, it'll do it. But I couldn't before. I'm not crazy. I promise. It's only, only when I'm looking that it, it like, works. It's a perfect fit through the top, so it's perfect. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, you may take your tokens back. Uh, and Oh, actually, well, the following morning you wanted to have a conversation, did you not? Well, I think we did kind of decide that we're going mm -hmm. to listen. Yeah. With the Orm book. The Orm book. Orm book. Orm book. Book Orm? Book Orm. Okay. So. Boop. Boop. And. Whoops. Boop. With the help of Freda and Devamia. Uh, uh, they are able to pinpoint your exact uh, location uh, a bit more accurately on your map. Uh, so you know that uh, uh, the remains of Stealing Dread are here. Wait, I need a new token activator. Uh, uh, I'll just copy what have we got? Grace for Cities. Uh, well, black is fine, then. So. The Stealing Dread. Uh, which means that you are here. Um, uh, and you... Based uh, on uh, Orm's uh, directions, you need to head um, west and a little bit uh, south uh, to get to where he remembers seeing uh, a giant stone skull. <clears throat> Great, let's... Uh Let's get going, I suppose. Pontifex is full armored, and he's gonna hop on the back of a uh, Faroom. <laughs> I think Pontifex has like an especial, like slippery, shiny glow to his skin. Like he's very, very well hydrated, more right, so than he has been in a long time. Exfoliated. I feel like that whole, like the whole floor of the tower, and like whichever one is near it, is like kind of overly humid and slightly damp from the steam just going through the whole night. 
but he's feeling very good and refreshed. And I think like the cat, I think uh, his tressum is with him and it's like kind of floofed up a little bit. It's very clear, <laughs> like one of us like steam bath the cat at some point. <laughs> oh no. So you're covered in scratch marks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he's actually fine. She just looks really like annoyed in the way that a cat does. Yeah. She does. <laughs> she does. Uh doesn't Pontifex have mage hand? Yes. So it's like he does. His uh, his mage hand has six fingers. So thing. no amount of scratching could have could have stopped him. He has he has mage hand. He has precipitation, and he has shape water. He's gonna do all of those. Wait, does he have mage hand? Uh, he should, cause he had a six fingered hand thing. I don't see. If I'm looking at the wrong character sheet, nope. I see Mage Hand. Are you crazy? Hmm. No, you're right. It's not on there. That's that's not right, because I've used Mage Hand several times throughout the campaign. <laughs> I'll find out. Oh well, either way. In any case. In any uh, case. But I do think that he spent that that bit bathing the cat trying to think of a name. He's getting there. <laughs> It's just not quite long enough yet. Whoops, these are the wrong dice. Uh, anything you, you guys need to do before you set off? Uh, the one thing I can tell you uh, is that in this region, uh, you are pretty much relying on Alex making your food. Because um, in, in, in this area, which uh, um, your new companions are referring to as Dustfall, um, all manner of food is I inedible uh, to you. Um, every time you find a, a fruit or maybe some animal that you could hunt, uh, they're straight up made of stone. Mm. I'm looking at wrong notes again. Pip will take a stone fruit for the collection. Does that count as a rock? Yeah. <laughs> Pip had a petrified mouse in his collection. <laughs> That's true. Maybe uh, it came from this place. You had a rock grunts. Oh, nice. Um, and one... No, nothing, sorry. Ha. No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A um, couple of things of note that will happen on your journey. Um, during a short uh, break, uh, um, as you guys are sitting down for like an hour to rest your legs, uh, and Tekka, you're trying to find a good spot where you could take a, a nap. Uh, and mm -hmm. as you is you find an area where um, the trees are sort of positioned in a way that uh, um, when the wind blows, uh, it clears the air a little bit around you and it feels like it's a little easier to breathe. Um, and it feels like you, you get just the right breeze and no dust is being lifted. Uh, it's a perfect spot. Uh, and uh, everything around you is so dreadfully gray. Uh, all the, the trees and the leaves and the grass and the flowers. Uh, it's like all color has been drained from this area. Um, and the the monotony of that kind of kind of makes you sleepier than usual. Uh, and as you're sitting down and you're looking forward to this nap, um, a, a pebble next to you takes flight and just flutters off and you rub your eyes for a moment not really sure what you just saw uh, and, and you look at it and as it circles back around and lands near you uh, this is a butterfly but when it was standing perfectly still 
with the color of its wings, it looked exactly like a small flat rock. <sighs> there are animals here. Life be, animals? Be mindful. What appears as rock may yet still live. Uh, Freda excited, excitedly jolts uh, uh, some information down in one of her notes and says, I, um, I think th these are called mimic, mimic butterflies. And they mimic their surroundings, I'm assuming. Right. They um they blend in. Uh, at least in, in dustfall. I don't think I've ever seen them outside of it. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm Good kidding. Catch, Tekka. Eating Tekka's uh, warning. Uh, for the rest of the journey, you pay a bit closer attention to your surroundings, and what felt like an overall empty and dull landscape uh, has a lot of life that is kind of hiding in it. Uh, it's not just the butterflies that blend in with their surroundings, but all sorts of bugs and smaller creatures. Uh, there's a moment when Pip, you pick up this, this rock, uh, and it caught your attention because it it almost maybe it's your imagination but this looks to you like what you think a dragon egg would look like um it has scales but it's it's egg shaped and it's made of rock overall um it's big enough that you it's like uh, football sized and you need both hands to lift it as it's uh, uh, kind of heavy um and you're you're pretty excited uh, about adding it to your co collection. You're thinking about uh, uh, that that it won't fit in the same pouch as the rest of your pebbles. Um, but then the rock speaks to you, and as <laughs> p -p please let me go. Oh, Pip will put it down, and then immediately get flat on the ground next to it, just face, uh, just head up facing it, and say, "What are you?" The egg, the rock, the armadillo unfurls. <gasps> you see, you see its head um, coming out from it, from the the egg shape that it was in before, um, and it it sniffs the air for for a few seconds and and, and says, I'm, "I'm just, I just, ah!" And it rolls up again and it begins to just oh. <laughs> roll off. What? Wait, we have. We have someone a lot like you. Goodbye. <laughs> <Yeah, bye. laughs> Pip, if they are anything like Ollie, then you must be patient. They will not take kindly to you the first day. Well, it's not going to take kindly to me ever again if it never comes back. <laughs> Still, you must be patient. Okay. That was really cool, though. It seems this land is more vibrant than it seems. Is Ollie gonna be able to find anything to eat in this ground? I have some reserves, but it will not last much longer. Ollie After has been. Days. You've seen Ollie um, in in the evening dig around in in the dust uh, and uh, never really bring up anything. Hmm. Uh, although. As that problem became apparent, uh, um, Alex 
has begun to also provide uh, food that is adequate for all through his magic. Oh. Great. I, I might have talked over you. No. All good. On your second day of travel, um, from from a distance, you spot more recognizable uh, animals. Um, you see a small group of elephants. Um, they're quite a distance away from you, and from where you currently are, you're kind of like higher up compared to them. Uh, and you're sort of traveling in their direction, but they're moving uh, away. Um, yeah, they're moving away from you. Uh, you end up a, sort of like passing them from a little bit uh, uh, up close. Um, and while they very much resemble the kind of elephants that you know about, uh, their tusks are made of stone. Uh, it's almost it's almost the same color as their skin. Uh, and it actually take, takes a moment to see where one ends and the other begins. Uh, and another thing you come across is another stone shell tortoise. Uh, <laughs> and you guys spot the shell from a distance. Uh, Pip gets a little excited about and having another encounter with one of these, but it no, quickly becomes... No, I must be patient. <laughs> <laughs> it quickly becomes apparent um, that this shell is broken. Uh, oh. A section of it uh, has been sliced through and the rest of the animal is missing there's only the broken shell left behind oh no something was tough enough to break stone we could soon be in danger If this land is the result of this stilling dread, and still they live, there is a lot we don't understand. <clears throat> you should ask them next time how they get any food. Maybe that will help us. I mean, we do have Telex, but interesting to know, right? You are unless, right. Unless they all eat stones. But... We should try. We should learn. All right, Pip, enough patience. Next time you see an animal, ask them how they find food. I'm on it. Okay. Do you think um, the elephants are friendly? Hmm. Well... Have the other two encountered elephants here? <clears throat> this is their first time seeing them. Maybe a smaller animal. They are very strong beasts. I feel a sort of kinship with these things. And I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it is the skin. We can't feel that bad. Teacher, can you still form water in this land? Uh, of course, if there is water, I can uh, move it about. And if there is not water, I can simply make it. If they are still like you and I, 
they will need water. Perhaps mm -hmm. that is how we open communications. Sure, Pip. Perhaps if you can speak to them, if they need water, I can make a, a lot of it. All right. I just hope that these aren't the things that broke through that tortoise's shell. It would approach an elephant. Oh, yeah, you've already passed the elephants. Pip Just... will approach the next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> Pip wishes to speak to the next animal he, he spots, basically, yes? Yeah. All right. Um, the chance to do so will present, it, present itself uh, the immediate following morning. Um, as Pip can see two birds. They are quite large, kind of the, the size uh, uh, that red beaks can reach, although these are obviously uh, different kinds of, bir of birds, uh, not just uh, visually. Uh, the fact that they have uh, a differently shaped head uh, and kind of this like bent neck uh, uh, at a strange angle. Um, but mainly their coloration, uh, how they are, they're dust colored. Uh, and the, the way they carry themselves, right now they're not flying, uh, they're hopping around this small stretch of land where the, where the terrain gets um, a lot. Uh, there's a lot more vertical uh, difference, uh, lots of hills around the area and things that could begin to be called mountains. Um, but they're, they're, they're not flying, they're on the ground. And the way they have their wings uh, spread out, like held wide open instead of uh, instead of being at rest uh, next to their bodies, uh, makes them look quite a lot larger. Okay. <clears throat> Oh no. <laughs> I can't make an elephant sound. <laughs> Pip makes one though. <laughs> what what sound? Blows his trumpet. You're making an elephant sound? At the birds? I mean, sh shoot. Bird. Yes. <laughs> he changes. Oh, 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 he switches <laughs> accents from elephant to bird. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> what is he saying? Excuse me. We have traveled from far away. If you are hungry or thirsty, we can help you with that. Oh, we just have a few questions about this place. The birds screech and begin to approach very fast. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they, they're not friendly. They're not friendly at all. Uh, they're abort, just, abort, abort, they're, abort. <laughs> they're just, <clears throat> they're just shouting at you. Give them back. Give them back. Give them back. Give, give what back? Give our eggs back. Give our eggs back. They're we like didn't take your eggs. They're nearly upon you. Uh, if the birds are going towards Pip and he seems a little panicked. One of us to be like, eh, fine, and I'm gonna cast Create or Destroy Water and I'm gonna make it rain uh, in a 30 foot <laughs> area around Pip. Uh, I can, yeah, waterfalls as rain in a 30 foot cube within range. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. It's gonna rain 10 gallons. Okay. Over however long that takes. <clears throat> uh, that feels like it would just be like the length of the round, probably. Yeah. 10 gallons isn't that much. Um, okay, yeah. Pontifex, you, you shout your spell, uh, Pip, you're drenched all of a sudden, and the birds immediately back <laughs> off. They're still squawking at you, uh, but they're no longer charging towards you. Something took their eggs. 
Uh, so who took their axe? I don't know. Ask them. They're gone. Oh, I thought they're still squawking. No, you. they're still, yeah, they're still here. Oh, they're still here. They're still here. They just, I just interrupted the charge. So now they're just staying back and squawking. Yeah, they're like 15 feet away from you. Who took your eggs? Do you know? I would also make my way towards Pip. Oh, sir. Um, the the birds are squawking in a in a panicked uh, uh, manner, uh, as they uh, as they say. Did you take them? Did you take them? No. <clears throat> Maybe they, we can help you find them. They turn the question back to you. Who took them? Who took them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of you, there's a lot of squawking just uh, going back and forth. Um, I do not know! <laughs> I don't know how to make this any clearer, and I've tried not to raise my voice, but I don't know! <laughs> is, is, is that working? Uh, the, the Vamya uh, proceeds to... Um, cast a spell and uh, after she does so uh, she she kind of nods along with each squawk and begins to translate for the for the rest of the party <clears throat> um and then she says i think we could find out maybe if we could see the nest we could try to track uh, uh, who may have i've taken them Although, I mean, if he, if it's an animal, then uh, the the probably gone by now in someone's stomach. And if it was a person, perhaps the same thing. Freda, do you think we can make a stone omelette? N not the time. How many, how many birds are there? Two. Two? Mm-hmm. I'm casting Animal Friendship. Animal They'll need to make friendship. wisdom saves. Animal Friendship. Uh, let's convince the beast that you mean it to no harm. Unless their intelligence is four or higher. Uh, which they're birds, not... so maybe... Oh. They have a 10 and a 12. Okay, they both fail. Uh, for the next 24 hours, they are my friend. <laughs> oh, damn. Or at least it lets us convince them that we mean it no harm. Okay. Um, both of these birds calm down a little bit. Um, towards you, at least. They are still very much freaking out. About their missing eggs. All right, hey, we're we're not your enemies here. We didn't take your eggs. All right. Now, if we all just calm down and talk about this, maybe we can figure out who did. Can you help us? Can you help us? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe if you show us your nest, we can try and find tracks. Um, uh, the two of them begin to wobble away. Pip will, uh, turn back to the rest of the group and speak through Squeak. Alright, they're gonna show us their nest now. If any of you attack them, they're gonna go right back to being crazy, so... Let's just try and solve this... ...without hurting anyone. And people start waddling after the burbs. How big are these birds again? Uh, they're about your size. They they reach big, up big at birds. your height, uh, but with the way they were holding their wings, they're a lot wider. Uh, they don't seem to fly at all. 
And when they when they bring you to their nest, the nest is not uh, um, it's not all the way up on a tree, uh, but rather it is on a very um, it's just a well hidden area beneath uh, between various rocks and stone trees. Uh, in sort of like it kind of makes up for a little alcove. Um, and you would hardly call this a nest, but there, it is built out of stone twigs and uh, um, <clears throat> blades of petrified gr uh, grass. And it is empty. Uh, I guess Pip would start looking for tracks. Anyone else? Anyone else want to look for tracks? Sure, I'll help. Oh. Sure. Aha. Alright, everyone involved can can roll. Sure, I guess uh, I'll do a roll. Can I guidance this? Yeah. What skill? Oh, survival, sorry. Survival. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm so, glad you guys got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with your combined efforts, uh, you end up finding uh, some uh, uh, light scratches in the ground. Spots where the dust has been displaced and hasn't already built back up. Um, and it's it's a little harder to follow a trail in, in a place like this. Uh, but you, you begin to you begin to move. Uh, you figure with the size of these birds, uh, uh, Pip, the eggs would be uh, also themselves quite uh, quite sizable. Like armadillo um, sized? Yeah, maybe armadillo sized. Um, which would make them heavy and probably difficult to, to lift and would be easier to, to roll them around. Um, you're kind of wondering about the, the well-being of the little chicks inside uh, as you wander off not too far. Uh, towards one of the closest uh, and most uh, uh, harshly sloped uh, hills. Um, towards what feels like a, a small cave entrance. Um, Brooke would have to like lean over to be able to walk inside. <laughs> um, but a person could fit through. A horse though would be difficult. And a wyvern even more so. Oh boy. I think they went in there. Well, do we all go? I will go. Scout it out. I will call for you. Okay. Careful, Tekka. How about we take a small break here? Alrighty. Uh, make okay. it maybe uh, we resume at uh, three fifteen. Sounds good. And then we have another forty-five minutes to go. Cool. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Uh, do me a favor, and all of you press B on your keyboard, and you're in the break. Oh, I'll just oh, set this up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Be like <laughs> blind. Which is your Steam name? Blind. Oh, it's Blind. 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 <laughs> okay. Break time. Sorry Oops. for mistaking the birds for elephants. I got distracted <laughs> for a second and didn't catch that part. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Everyone Hello? is back, which means you can take off your blindfolds. <gasps> Is Matt back? Oh, oh. I am. Hands. Oh my oh. goodness me. Uh, oh. Alright, Tekka. Let us know <laughs> when you're done. Speed run! Speed run! <laughs> this okay. seems to be the perfect route. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just no clip into those rocks. It would be fun. No, no clip into the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jason would probably find a way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, take a begin with a stealth check, and then uh, let me know what you'd like to do. Okay, dokie. Let's see here. Not great. Okay. Love this music. Uh, what is Tekka doing? Uh, yeah, I guess there's not a lot to see from this entrance, right? It's like it's how much vision. light is there? Yeah. Um, okay, you have dark vision. Uh, the light mm -hmm. seeps in pretty much like in a straight line uh, to, towards here. Uh, and then as you, as you get around the corner and you look around this bend, uh, everything ahead of you is dark. Uh, so to, to your eyes, it's just in shades. Uh, um, it's just in shades of gray. Uh, as far as you can tell, at least from from this spot, uh, there is no light, uh, uh, no sources of light within this cave, which seems to be uh, going quite away. Okay. Uh, yeah, if Tekka, like, peeks around this corner uh, and sees nothing, then he will head back, say... There is no one in the entrance. It is dark. Be careful. And silence. Uh, Pip will turn back and translate to the birds and also ask them if they want to come with or do they want to stay behind where it's safe. The birds are coming with. Okay. Then Pip will ask one of them if they will volunteer for a telepathic bond. <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain to them what that what that means? That's a really good question. <laughs> okay, if if you're up for it, I want to touch you and I will oh boy, I will make it so that we can always communicate even when we're not close to each other. And also, it will make you be able to hit things better if I'm next to them. Um, one of them, which you understand to be the, the mother, uh, volunteers for this. She is... Well... Uh, she, uh, she is very much ready to hurt whatever might have taken her ex. Uh, and if what you're proposing is going to help her accomplish that, she, she is down. Alright. Uh, then I will Of course, cast... she expresses this in far fewer words, where uh, <laughs> she, she just says, uh, I go! I go! And I take my axe back! Great. Pip will cast Beast Bond. Uh, so as long as we're in line of sight, within line of sight then we uh we have a telepathic link and they can they can communicate telepathic simple emotions and concepts and also when it's attacking a creature within five feet of pip it gets advantage okay <clears throat> uh since i can't really see in the dark we will have we will need a light so getting a surprise jump is probably very unlikely so just prepare for that um Dvamia will ask uh, uh, who who else among you uh, can see in the dark I don't believe so. Yes, I, I cannot, but uh, I can make uh, lights. No problem. We have to think about the trade-off. Um, as, as you pointed out, light would mean that we would be spotted a lot easier by anything dangerous in there. Perhaps that could wait until... Uh, until it's absolutely necessary. 
Uh, you know, I've tried to be sneaky before, but the clanging of my armor keeps giving me away. So, like, perhaps I just stay a, a little ways back. If the light doesn't give me away, then, you know, this will. <laughs> All right. Um... All right, you guys uh, drag your tokens into this corner of the map, and... Uh, um, in, in whatever position you'd like to be in. Uh, the horses and the wyvern can't come, but Devami and Freyda... Uh, I told Freyda would rather stay uh, outside with Murderclaw. Um, she doesn't feel like she can assist in, in, in this at all. Ah, so she'll she'll sit this one out. Wait, so does Pontifex now make the lights or not? Uh, no, he's just gonna he's gonna hang pretty far back. Uh, and then if he needs to to like continue along, he'll make his own light, but he's gonna stay far enough back from you guys where it shouldn't mess with you. Well, Brooke has to hold on to someone. Help, where did he go? <laughs> He's in your hand. Oh. Um, um, is there like, is this place just completely pitch black or is there any like bioluminescence at all? As far as like, Tekka has seen so see, far, just... um, I mean, Tekka has only seen this section. Ooh, we cannot <laughs> see my pencil at all. Uh, but it, it appears to be dark. Okay, well, Pontifex is going to make a light uh, on the end of his own staff and he's going to hang really far back so it probably doesn't help anyone else, but he's going to make it's gonna make like a dark, like red light, so that maybe it's not so harsh. So then Brooke might stay with Pontifex. Yeah, wow. We'll, we'll just hang back. That sounds like a good idea. You know, I don't think I ever realized that you can cast the light and make it any color, mm -hmm. but it, it does specifically say so. It's just yep. never hit me. Oh, cute. <laughs> I think Pontifex, every time he's ever used light before, it's always been blue. It's bad for your eyes. Yes, but the, his whole <laughs> theme is blue, so, you know. Oh no, you can't have blue light in the evening, especially. It's just <laughs> yeah. not good. I'm doing red light now, so maybe it'll help whatever monsters are going to get sleepy. sleepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the plan? Uh, if nothing else is stayed, I think Tekka's just going to, like, Stealth forward. I can take the lead. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just take a stealth rule from everybody else too. Do you still want Brooke and I to roll? Oh yeah. Everybody. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nine, yes. nine, nine. We need to keep it going. Nine, nine. Allow me to show you how it is done. <laughs> Alex has a plus five. In his caution. Oh, wait, no, I have disadvantage because armor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Please get a nine. <laughs> oh, wow. Allow me to show you how it is done. Wait, it's yeah. pretty good. The fact that you're hanging, like, in the back. Um, oh, man. Is, I am a ghost on the wind. He's certainly helping. <laughs> a froggy um, whisper. Um, Alright, so you Pip guys... Pip is just trying to keep the birds calm. <laughs> oh, oh, I haven't put the birds out. Thought I was missing something. Here you go. Oh. Look at the detail on those models. <laughs> High nice quality. polygon count. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay, sorry. <laughs> really really got nice you. polygons. <laughs> um you you proceed forward and you're trying to be as quiet as you can. Uh, in the back you have a little bit of light to guide you. Uh, up ahead, the fact that everything to 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 the eyes of the rest of you is, is in shades of gray and everything is already pretty gray it's actually making 
not that much of a difference. Um, but the uh, it's it's hard to spot imperfections in the terrain um, in in this particular situation. Uh, so a lot of you find yourselves occasionally hitting a rock that you hadn't spotted, or um, nearly bumping into a wall that you thought was a foot further away from you. Uh, Tekka, the moment you get around this corner, uh, you do spot some far away light. Um, and it's a very slight, uh, light blue shade, and it's coming from all the way in the back, uh, compared to where you are. Uh, and the light certainly feels not natural. Uh, the, the color is uh, the kind of light that Pontifex usually would make. Light deep within. Prepare and follow. And think I will keep moving forward. Past the large stone walls of this cave that opens up before your eyes, you begin to see some semblance of color in the light that shines ahead. Um, and what seems to be vegetation. Um, you spot uh, further up ahead what seems to be a large, with large, I mean, uh, the size of a tree, a mushroom. Uh, this one with shades of color uh, that you haven't seen in days in dust fall. Uh, as everything further up ahead is beginning to take on this slight uh, bluish hue. Uh, you see what looks like the stem of another broken mushroom and some colored flowers and smaller mushrooms up ahead. I can see why someone would make this their home. Head looks good. Any sign of the egg nabbers? No. Do we a, see head, an... oh. a head looks open. We might be spotted. Do we you see said that the... there's um there's like natural light up ahead that's like similar to the blue that Pontifex usually does. Uh yeah. Easy enough. He's gonna shift the color to try to match that blue. <laughs> Do we see do. any footprints or any markings on the ground? Uh, with your previous rolls, uh, um, yes, uh, Brook does, and so do Pip and Devamia. Um, it feels like something has been shuffling on the ground pretty recently. Uh, there is no wind blowing dust into this place, uh, and what dust has accumulated on on the ground of this cave. Um, seems to have been uh, disturbed recently. Uh, so the trail feels like it goes further up ahead and then it turns towards this section. Well, we'll follow the trailer, right? We should decide now. Do we attack? Do we bargain? I think uh, talking first is, you know, usually prudent. On account of having multiple people who can do it. Okay. And then, you know, Telex has his way of calming things. Then I will not show danger. Let's move forward. Oh. Oh, Mia. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't see that I had her. As we're uh, as we're going, can Pontifex do um, detect magic? Just kind of have that rolling to to have like a little bit of a, a thirty foot thing to see if anything magical is about anything hidden. That type of thing. Winter. 
Oh, Sorry. she's muted. Yes. No, you're good. Um... I, 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 I've been muted for a moment, I'm sorry. Um, right, yes, you can absolutely cast your spell. Cool. Uh, he will do that. He's just going to have detect magic going for, I guess, however long I can keep refreshing it with uh, with ritual casting, but it's 10 minutes at a time. It's uh, a 30 are you ritual range. casting it now? Or are uh, you yeah, casting yeah. it? Okay, because that will take a while. It will be yeah, minutes. it'll take a little bit. Uh, so you begin to... Uh, you begin to cast your spell. Oh, wait, no. Oh. Uh, I'm a scribe's wizard. I'll use my feature to instantly cast it as a ritual. Ah. All right, sure. Uh, so, Pontvex, you... Uh, oh, it's been a little while. You use, like, the little orb thingy to... Uh, as your, quote-unquote, spell book, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, uh, the, the metal gold astrolabe thingy. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. which, like, opens up... Uh, yeah, it has like, so it's like this this bronze gold sphere that has like a bunch of intricate, like almost mechanical looking designs to it. Uh, and then on like one side of it, there's like a circular bit that has like a bit of magical lighting to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of what he does, like, uh, like whenever he pulls the pen, it just comes out of that. It's like a little portal looking thing on it. Uh, okay. So it doesn't like open up. I think there's like little bits and bobs that like move around. Uh, it's like kind of clockwork -y. it's kind of like the workings of a watch okay. that moves around but the thing doesn't really open it kind of stays as an orb so pontifex you look down at your uh oh how do i pronounce it that As astrolabe, astrolabe. okay yeah. you look down at your astrolabe for a moment uh it just takes you uh a few seconds to cast this spell uh and you do so uh, keep keeping your voice down um making it as quick as you can um, and when you look up, uh, something horrible has happened directly ahead of you. Uh, the Vamia hits a rock, uh, and she does that, she does so in, in a way where she, she just got her, like, smallest pinky toe on it, um, it, which is the single worst possible thing that could have happened. Uh, and she lets out a bit of, of a slightly louder exclamation at this than she would have liked and just ends up tumbling uh and the rest of the group um uh, between between Tekka and Pip and Brooke everybody caught by uh, by surprise on Vami suddenly falling they all pile up tripping over one another uh it's a mess the birds are backing away in fear and, and screeching uh <laughs> Ta Talix is watching all this unfold in horror um <laughs> and uh, as this pile up is happening in front of you, uh, in addition to all this, suddenly uh, you, there is this sizzling sensation upon your skin uh, as acid sprays upon the entire group from above. Uh, oh! And we're just going to initiate combat the next time. Because oh! <laughs> we only have half an hour, we probably can't we're dead. get done. You killed us all. Uh, <laughs> but... Oh, it's Your over. stealth rolls were Wait. terrible, and then the Vamya rolled a one. It was a mess. Acid damage, oh, you're all, huh? You're piled up, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, just whenever that, this, I guess I'll make a note in the chat that uh, <laughs> I can absorb elements this, so I will. If we if we get high enough, we can Not take him out. He's fine. We get a better vantage point. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have a slightly shorter session today and start with the excitement the ne next time. Great! Um, <laughs> Does the chat box carry over between sessions or is it cleared between each one? The chat is cleared. Mm. Um, oh yeah, so if you want to make note of something, do it in, in Discord or in your own notes. <laughs> And uh, uh, yeah. that's it. That's where we'll end the session. Cool session, Winter. Yeah. I love <laughs> seeing all of these these animals that have like adapted or been transformed by this petrified terrain. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm so curious. Oh. Yeah, elephant should adapt like that in real life too. Have their things not be made of what is it called in English? Or tusks. Like ivory? Yeah, ivory. 
over the generations turn into stone. Um. Bruh. Hmm. I would be sad if elephants didn't have ivory ivory tusks in real life. It's Maybe pretty then cool. Maybe people would stop killing yeah, them. That's oh, well. what I mean. All right, guys. Yes, I have single-handedly solved the <laughs> the <laughs> ivory poaching crisis. But yeah, thanks for playing, and sorry about the shorter session. Um, but we'll have another next week. Hopefully very soon. I'm gonna nice. end the stream now. Cool. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye.